good morning and good morning welcome and welcome to the present how are we doing today let's talk about casemiro and kobe Mayano. before we enter the conversation properly uh be kind enough to strike the like button subscribe yet subscribe i appreciate you guys for subscribing you're yet subscribe and make sure you turn on your notification bell let me repeat one more time like the video subscribe yet subscribe and don't forget to turn on the notification bell when my united were on the verge of signing Casemiro. No, I made a video then saying this was a bad choice. Like I understand he has won Champions League with Real Madrid and Real Madrid team. That player that could cover his flaws. Good tackler, not not that great in the ball, but he played in the team that was you know, that, that actually complimented him as a player. But bringing him to Man United that needed a younger version of Casemiro, a, an industrious player in the midfield, a Man United that was actually struggling at that time it didn't make no logical sense to go and bring a casemiro but the man united fans the faithfuls and the content creators were shouting no his experience ah champion the casemiro like it doesn't make no sense if if you claim to know football and watch football you can't go and buy a player who has played the last 10 i think eight to ten years at real madrid and is coming to the premier league at 31 he does not make no sense the premier league is very demanding physically and mentally and he's not a young player that can adapt. Even the older players, they're going to adapt. They can't be a mainstay. They should be players that should be part of the squad to help you to just consolidate on what you're doing. Man, you are not winning at that time. Man, you are not strong. Man, you are trying to get back to the top. And you bring in the Casemiro. And we have likes of Terry trying to justify that. He's not that old. You know, he's not that old. He, he is a good player for, for £60 million. Pounds. Absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Now, all of you, are uh, yelling down that oh he's finished he's finished how come we noticed was finished even last year even last year that he scored some crucial goals for you he was just running on fumes casimiro has been running on fumes for a long time and anybody with a decent iq that understands the game that has no agenda I, like i said i might not be a match United fan i don't have no agenda i watch football i enjoy watching football and i can see certain things that are very obvious to the eye it is not an argument you want to win. It's not even that it's, it's a tasteless banter. Sometimes, put the banter aside. Let's discuss football. Let's watch it objectively. The statistics has to be in sync with the eye test. I, for me, I don't personally read statistics, but I can understand using statistics in some instances because there are some people who cannot objectively appraise what they are watching. And you're going to use statistics, use it in the right context. We all know Casemiro was not going to take Man to the next level, even though when it's caused some crucial goals last last season, it was just paper over the cracks. And obviously, you cannot see. Even the Saudis, I don't pay much for Casemiro because he's done and dusted. And the fact that a lot of you are not coming out and shouting, "Oh, get rid, get rid!" Now it's funny. You all wanted him. Ninety-five percent of the Manchester United fan base wanted Casemiro. So to not start blaming the Glazers and Ten Hag is very rich in hindsight because you do not have the, the consequences of making such decisions. You just come and talk your talk, vomit your vitriol, and no consequences. But the consequences are with the Manchester United hierarchy who actually pay and secure the services of customer that a lot of you wanted. That, that, that's why I don't take you guys seriously because 95% plus of you wanted him not to be calling him out right now and calling out the Glazers and Ten Hag. He's very, very rich. Same for Varane, too. I'm still hearing that. I'm still hearing Magorby. He owns the biggest uh, YouTube channel in terms of the football side. Still saying, let's keep Varane for at least one more season for experience. He can't stay fit. Like, it doesn't make no sense. How do you plan with somebody that can't stay fit? Like saying you take an excellent employee who is very consistent with his uh, attendance over an average employee who is very consistent with attendance. I would rather take the average guy who is consistent with attendance because you can plan with them. I don't care how excellent you are. If you cannot be part of the plan because you're always erratic, you are useless. So that's what they're saying. Let's keep around. Even though we know he's always crooked, he's always getting injured, even though he might be our best defender on paper, but in practicality, how many games has he missed this season? But it doesn't just make sense. But these are the people you crown as jurors. The people you still listen to. 
there are people who take their opinions very serious, even though evidently you can see they are always making errors and make projections that are always false and wrong all the time. Nobody's a, nobody can get everything right all the time. But when someone is constantly making their bad judgment every time, you have to review it. Now, let's go to Kobe Mino. I'm not yet to rain on the young chap. I think Kobe Mino is a good player. I've already said he's a good player. But the hype is overboard. The hype on Kobe Mino is overboard. He's a player, young, promising player, keyword promising player that is doing well in a bad thing. So it's easy for him to look greater than he is because he's in a bad thing. Digest it. Let him develop. And let's see whether he will actually maintain that level if man you become a better a, a better team and better uh, uh squad. We could might not still be part of the starting level when man you actually get to that level because sometimes it's easy for certain players to thrive under the expansion of the team. They will just be standing out like a sore thumb. And if I watch Kobe, I watch him intently, he's a very good player, not excellent, not top class yet, not world class yet, nothing like that. He shows flashes of guile. Can turn the ball, uh, he, he shows maturity for his age, which is very obvious. Uh, he's calm on the ball, he's very thoughtful. I he, he, he makes a few mistakes, he's part of the learning curve of a young player, so I'm not going to beat them on that. But this is world class, it will take money to the next level, even at this level. Apart from the guy he shows, how many assists, how many creative plays is he giving man you? How many progression is it giving man? He's just doing the, the, the normal descent of a midfielder. He's not taking money to the next level. So this hype, this less fast tracking to the England squad, you are going to kill the promise of this player. And, and it's crazy that my United fans don't learn from this. I've seen the likes of Rashford overhype. You can see why Rashford, the reason why a lot of you are overly harsh on Rashford is that in your mind, Rashford is this world-class player that is underperforming. No, he has never been a world-class player. Rashford is a decent player that can have purple patches of world class moments. And in your mind, because of those moments, you're thinking he can he should be able to repeat those moments every time and every season. And he can't. Because that's not what he is. You guys are putting a burden of what who is not on him, expecting him to do something he can't do. That's the clash there. Go walk. There's nothing top class or what about Rashford. He's a very good player. Unfortunately, the club has made him the face of the of the, the uh, of the club. He's the highest paid because of this sporadic world class moment. Sporadic world class moment. Oh uh, yeah, you are blaming him. Oh, he's so inconsistent. He's, because that is he's not a world class player. He just have moment. And you guys are thinking that he should, be, he should provide those moments every time. He does not have those facilities to provide in those world-class moments every time. So he's not a world-class player. He's just a purple patcher that can give you those moments. As for Kobe Mino, I am not going to make a solid appraisal of Kobe, on Kobe Mino because it's unfair. He's still developing. What I know that for now, He's not top class. He's not work. He's a very, very good player and very promising. And let's see how he can develop and see and, and move, up, move forward. Now, if the team becomes better and the same routine is shared, good. If the team become, be, begins to win honors and see it, then we cannot go to that level. But right now, in a dysfunctional, horrible season, that he's not doing something exceptional. See, let me give you an example. When Arsenal was still languishing in the dumpster fire, you could see Sanchez stood out because of how he played, how he carried the team by himself sometimes. Kumano is not carrying the team by himself. Now, if, let's say Kumano was carrying the team. We can have the conversation, but this guy is a top-class talent. He is not carrying the team. So the way we throw world-class and top-class around these days is very, very appalling. He's just doing this, showing decent skill sets in a bad thing. Oh, oh, he's a nice, he's not the next best thing. He's a promising player. Let's see how it develops. So it's not for me. I'm not here to gloat about the, <laughs> the demise of Manu. I'm just calling out the obvious hypocrisy of the majority of the fans who supported the signing of Asemiro, now trying to blame Ten Hag and the hierarchy solely for bringing a player whose legs is, is done. Or we, some, some part of the media are saying he's not showing a, a enough commitment. No, he's showing commitment just that the legs are, are finished. He's tired. He is not that player. And for Kobe Mayano, 
that was overhyped two or three months ago. I said it, it's overhyped. Let him develop organically. He's still a young player. It's, it's still a lot for him to learn. So let me know what you think in the comment section regarding Kobe Mayano and Casemiro and the old man Udebaku. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, do not forget to strike the like button. Very, very important. Subscribe to your yeah, subscribe. And do not forget to turn on your notification bell. One more time, like the video, subscribe, and make sure you turn on your notification bell. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye for now. <laughs>